Let's have a look at how defaults are handled in the Oracle database and lead on to some of the improvements that are coming in the next release of the Oracle database. To do that, I'm going to create a little table called emp2. It's just going to be a copy of scott.emp, but with a subset of the columns. I'm picking uh, employee name, ename, salary, and commission, and I'm doing 1 equals 0, which means the table starts off as empty. So if I describe my table, you can see it's just got the four columns. The commission column in this table is a nullable field, and I might choose to put a default on it. So I'll do alter table emp, modify the commission, and its default is now 100. What this means is if I do an insert without referencing the commission column, in this case, employee name and ename, and then add a value, you can see that when I add that row and then query from the table, you can see the commission has defaulted to 100. That's all well and good. However, an outstanding problem with defaults going back to older releases was if someone then explicitly nominated the commission column and said, yes, I want to put a null in there, then we respected that. And if you go query the data, you can see even though the commission table has a default of 100, because I explicitly said a null, then yes, it actually respected that and we got a null in there. Very often that's not the case. We want to say, if I've nominated a default, I don't care what you try to put in there, then that default must take place if you try insert a null. Now, one option we can do is just have a manual fix up. We can actually go and update the table and say, yep, whenever there's a null, go update it and set the commission to 100. But that's hardly a robust way of doing things. So back in 12.2, I think it was, maybe in 12.1, we extend the default clause to have default on null. So I can now alter my table and say modify the commission default on null. I've changed it now to 200 so we can see any differences, but it's not just default 200, it's default on null 200. Now, when I insert a brand new row, this time for an employee called Sue, even though I've explicitly said I want a null in the commission, because I have the default on null clause now set to 200, when I go query my data, you can see that row for Sue has had the 200 forced in, even though uh, we tried to put a null in there. So I guess it makes the implementation a little bit more robust. The default on null has in effect implicitly made that commission column not nullable anymore because any kind of attempt to put a null in there means it will actually be overridden with 200 when you do an insert. The problem there is if you try to do an update and explicitly try to set commission to null, yes, we don't want that to happen, but you'll get an error. It actually says, yep, you cannot set that commission to null anymore because there's that default on null clause. It seems a bit of sort of a contradiction though, that with an insert, if you try force a null, we'll default it. With an update, if you try force a null, we'll give you an error. You're probably thinking, well, duh, just don't write your programs to try write a null in there. You know, don't do that. However, unfortunately, some sort of 3GL programs often will, um, what's the best way? They'll grab the entire row from the database and they'll try put data back into it. So I can probably simulate that with a bit of Peel SQL here where I'm using a row type variable and I'm going to effectively set just a few of the values in the row type variable and leave the commission of null and I want to do an update and you a set row command where set row says, go ahead and update all the attributes for that information. When I try to do it, as you'd expect, I'm going to get an error as well, because even though I didn't really set the commission explicitly, the set row command has effectively tried to line up all the column values with my temp variable there. And what's the result? Commission was null. And so I get an error. In those kind of scenarios, what I might want to allow is that the null condition I had before, the default on null of 200, should also apply to updates. And in 23C, we've included that functionality. Now I can alter my table M2 and say, yep, commission is null, it's default on null, but I can nominate now for insert or update or both. And I have this now flexibility. So now default on null will apply even to an update command. If I go ahead and try to an update and set the commission to null, whereas before I was getting an error, now what will happen is I get a successful row update. If I go query that, you can see that I've actually gone and picked up the information and I haven't received any errors. So that's a nice way of removing errors from your code and having a nice consistency between insert default on null and update default on null, which is coming in 23C.